Hey, the portrait here. In the background, you see that I did a quick warm up sketch followed by a more complete drawing with commentary. This was actually taken a while ago when I was testing my pencil and my sketch pad. I wanted to make sure it is able to hold sketch well, but also able to blend very smoothly and achieve extremely dark tones, but at the same time still be malleable enough so I can erase out the highlights. Link for those supplies would be in description once it is online. So at first, when I was making this video, I was going to talk about some beginner's tips to realism. But as I was talking about it, I can't help but starting to get into details of things. And I realized it became kind of like a course and I needed an illustration in the video to make it more complete. I'll save that for another day. So very similar to my last video, for this video I'm going to talk about my thought process. So a quick sketch is an extremely uh, important and effective way to practice because you have very limited time, that's the whole point, right? So you have to focus on what is the most important. Um, and as you can see, I just it, it's very loose and I'm just drawing out the outlines. And notice there's actually very little curve that I'm using on the, that I use to making the structure lines. Because we humans are really, really bad at drawing curves, but we're very good at using lines. And with lines, we can pretty much uh, define where everything needs to be anyway. So the curves can be added in later with much more precision than if you just start out using curves. And once I get some idea and, you know, you know, I was testing out the paper. Once you get some idea, I just shaded out a few of the places that I think is important to make the drawing look like a drawing, somewhat of a drawing, which is, you know, of course, the eyes, some important shadows and form shadows, such as inside the eye sockets and so on. And that quickly, you can see it just the face will come out very fast. This, this was a few minutes, I think. Now we start on the main drawing and the guidelines are very similar to what I have done before. Uh, also as you can see, it's mainly using straight lines. The guidelines are based on typical guidelines I use, which is uh, top of the forehead, eyebrow, bottom of the nose, bottom of the chin, and uh, sometimes you can make a, another line to indicate bottom of the lips. And what I'm doing right now is the, the area, area that I'm shading now is mostly the shadows. This is called shadow mapping. So when you're not sure how to proceed sometimes, just start out with just map out where the dark areas and uh, give them some kind of tone. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate, but it will allow you to very quickly bring out the form because you're indicating which part is light, which part is shadow, which give users a lot of information on lighting and then structure of the form. So you can already kind of see like a type of face coming out. And uh, I started out with an eyebrow and because I mapped out the shadows and eyes and I'm pretty confident about their position. Especially with eyebrow, right? It's very easy to adjust even if you made a mistake. And the first eye, like I mentioned in the last video, the first eye and eyebrow, even if I make a mistake, I'll just, I can adjust everything else in relation to it as long as it's not too off. The second eyebrow comes in. So now I notice I'm doing the eyes very lightly because as I'm doing them, I'm filling things out to see if they are correct and I feel like there are so I just keep going sometimes I still make mistakes but uh, this has been proven to be a pretty effective method and the more confident I am that they are in the correct location the more uh, pressure I'm using on the pencil to give them definition and so on and and you can also now see the eye just pops out but I just made the eye darker with that uh, highlight, that circle highlight. There's really not much detail there, honestly. However, it just suddenly becomes like alive, right? It just pops out at you. This is for mostly the video's benefit. Like I mentioned before, it's better to do uh, dark tones gradually across the entire face through multiple iterations. Since I can now see a blurry form underneath again, like my last video, I, I can just start to just be really bold and uh, and start to join eyes and features with really, really dark tones. At this point, I, I'm really limiting myself in terms of how much I can adjust the, uh, the eyes. Like right now, if the nose is in the wrong position because I have the nostrils already joining at full darkness, I probably cannot change them as much, but it looks about right. 
and eyes when the other eye is really really important the two eyes are like the most important features so once the other eye looks roughly in the right position while its tones are not that dark it gives you time to carefully evaluate whether it is correct or not if the other eye feels a little bit off, while I did not put dark tones down, I still have a chance to make adjustments. And lips and nose, really I followed a very generic proportion, like perfect proportions by conventional standards. So you can see that the distance from the uh, top of the forehead to the eyebrow, and the distance from the eyebrow to the bottom of the nose are pretty much exactly the same. And same with the distance from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. I made the distances as close to each other as possible. And if you look at the corner of the lips, if you draw a line straight up from corner of the lips upward, they meet at the corner of the two irises. And if you draw from the corner of the nose using vertical lines. They will meet exactly at the corner of the entire opening of the eyes. So these are, these are I mean, it's, it's kind of an easy way to draw like a very pretty face. And now it's mostly just refining, blending, because remember I'm doing this as a test. So I remember I was doing a lot more blending. I want to make sure that it, the charcoal is able to be lifted from the paper. It is able to be blended very smoothly if I wanted to. Uh, and so on. So I spent a quite decent amount of time here and here I am testing hair and what I really want to test is how does the charcoal react with um, creating highlights. So I drew this entire portrait a little bit more refined than I would like to. At these days anyway, I would like my joints to be a bit more rough. Well, there's a bit more contrast between rough places and refined places so it's more interesting to look at and have the join not having a uniform sense of refinement if that makes any sense. Nevertheless, it's fine for the purposes of demonstration and testing. And I'm pretty happy with how you can still lift charcoal from the paper and creating the earrings and highlights despite how dark and heavy the tones are in those areas. Overall, this join is a bit easier than some of my other joints because all the proportions are so like generic. The distance between the eyes is exactly the, you know, the length of one of the eyes. Um, I mentioned the nose thing already. The bottom of the lip is exactly midway between the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. And the ears are, you know, pretty much between the nose and the eyebrows. The lighting has a Rembrandt lighting to it. You can see that by the little triangle of light on the right side of her face. One of the mistakes I would say would be her uh, right earring, the left earring from our point of view. It should not have the same uh, lighting as the, the right one due to its location. It should be much darker. Uh, the light is blocked by her face as well as her hair. There might be some rebound light and so on. So the highlight will be in a different place. The entire earring will, should be darker. But, you know, it's, it's just for fun. Sometimes you can get away with it. It's art after all. But the more I look at it, the more mistakes I see now. So I'm just gonna stop before I drive myself crazy. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to be updated. And especially regarding discount codes for the art supplies. Alright, cheers guys.